3.1415265 and so on. Does it sound familiar? Well, perhaps this is the most popular number that you would have heard now and then, otherwise known as pi. The term pi was coined by a Wells mathematician, William Holmes, in the year 1706 and later popularized by none other than Euler in the year 1737. It is defined as the ratio of circumference of a circle and its diameter and is a constant for a circle of any size. Apart from being a constant, it is also an irrational number since it cannot be expressed as a ratio of integers and its decimal places go on forever without repeating or without having any pattern within them. Pi has a unique quality that makes infinity look closer than ever before. The never ending and never repeating decimals of pi gives the impression of randomness, but they are not truly random. If you read up on the history of this constant, you would realize that the first early mention of pi occurred in the year 1900 to 1600 BC, when its first approximate value was found. Now obviously, pi had existed earlier. However, there is no significant history of how humans discovered pi. Perhaps it happened over thousands of years. We can only attempt to follow the logical trail of the origins of pi and how its development is related to advancement of human beings. It perhaps started with humans' ability to count and recognize pattern. Before mathematics was even a thing, people still knew how to count. For example, they may have found out rudimentary ways to keep track of their cattle. In the same way, long before pi came to be, it is only logical to assume that people would have recognized patterns in the things like the sun, the moon, or the tree trunk the flowers, or even the pupil of our eye, for example. They must have realized that all these naturally round objects shared something in common, the main idea being their shape. In the same way, before the mathematical concepts of ratio and proportions were known, people could still tell if one object is heavier than the other or bigger than the other. Soon enough, when they needed to compare two objects, they might have said things like this rock is twice as heavy as this rock. And just like that, the concept of ratio were born. And soon humans may have discovered the concept of proportionality. And when it comes to circles, they may have realized that if you double the circumference of a circle, then it also doubles its diameter. And therefore, the ratio of the circumference of the circle to its diameter is a constant. And this gave birth to pi. Now that we know that pi can be evaluated as the ratio of circumference to its diameter of the circle, let's do a simple rudimentary experiment to calculate its value. Now to demonstrate this rudimentary or a very simple experiment, I bring you to La Jolla Shores. And since it is supposed to be a primitive experiment, we will simply use a rope and a stick to find pi. So let us first draw a circle. And now, we are going to measure the circumference of the circle in terms of its radius. And if the known value of pi is correct, then the circumference of the circle should be around 6.28 times that of radius. So this point represents 6 times that of radius. And we still have this much length to cover. So it comes around 6.5 times that of radius. And because we have had a lot of errors and our measurement is not precise, I think it gives, gives you an idea of how our ancient people would have measured pi. This simple experiment where measurements were not even precise gave you some idea of what the value of pi is. However, pi has non-repeating infinite number of decimal places. And therefore, to calculate more accurately the value of pi, we'll have to use infinite series and pi has something to do with infinity. So let's explore. The digits of pi are infinite and non-repeating. That is, they can go on forever. As a matter of fact, it is conceivable to have significantly large numbers such as your date of birth or your mobile phone number or even your bank account number to be concealed somewhere in the seemingly endless digits of pi. Although there are infinite number of decimals in pi without any patterns, 
If you just use 10 decimal points of pi, you can obtain the circumference of Earth to an accuracy of 1 millimeter. If you use 32 decimal points of pi, you can obtain the circumference of the Milky Way galaxy to an accuracy of the width of an hydrogen atom. Now wait, it doesn't end there. If you use 65 decimal points of pi, we can obtain the circumference of the entire observable universe up to an accuracy of the Planck's length, which is the minimum measurable length possible. Despite that, mathematicians and computer scientists remain captivated by pi to an extent that they have calculated about 100 trillion decimal points of pi and that calculation took around 6 months. While seemingly useless, these calculations have helped improve computer programming and algorithms so that they can better handle big data. And this has direct impact in the areas like DNA sequencing, uh, big data, and prime number research. Clearly, mankind has always been interested in the concept of infinity, patterns, and the numbers that encodes secret of our universe, like that of pi. The origin of pi dates back to ancient civilizations like that of Egyptians and Babylonians. They've used pi to calculate area of circles. And the oldest written approximation of pi is 3.125 that was found on a Babylonian clay tablet. The Greek mathematician Archimedes was able to calculate the value of pi to be between 3.1408 and 3.1429. And he did that using the method of exhaustion where you break down a big area into smaller pieces and you calculate area of these small pieces, sum them together to get the area of larger piece. In more recent time, modern computational power has enabled us to calculate trillions of decimals of pi using infinite series. So let us look at some well-known infinite series that can be used to estimate pi with higher precision. Let us first consider the famous Madhava Leibniz series that was independently discovered by the Indian mathematician Madhava in the 14th century and then later rediscovered by the German mathematician Leibniz in the 17th century. The Madhava Leibniz series establishes the relationship between pi and all the odd numbers in existence. Although this series is relatively slow to converge, that is, it requires large number of terms in order to accurately approximate the value of pi to the required precision. Another famous infinite series that is related to pi was also discovered by the Indian mathematician Nilankanta Somyaji in the 15th century. This series converges much faster as compared to Madhva Leibniz series. In 1706, John Machen came up with a formula that can be used to calculate pi rather rapidly and he used that to obtain first 100 decimal points of pi and he did that purely using pencil and paper. That's quite an accomplishment. In fact, his formula established the relationship between pi and tan inverse of 1 by 5 and tan inverse of 1 by 239. Now we can replace the tan inverse function with its infinite series and that in combination with John Machen's formula can give us an infinite series that relates pi with other terms. Among all the three discussed series, John Machen's formula converges the quickest. I built a MATLAB code to obtain the first five decimal places of pi using the three series that we have talked about. As expected, Madhva Leibniz series converged very slowly and took about 215 seconds and about 426,184 terms in the sum. Followed by Nilankanta Somya G series that took about only 0.0045 seconds and 49 terms in order to obtain the five decimal places of pi. And John Machen's formula did the best with only 0.0022 seconds and seven terms in the series. Now these numbers may be different if you had used different programming language or deployed a different algorithm or used parallel computing to speed up your code. However, this little code informed us of relative performance of each of these infinite series with respect to one another. For instance, if John Machen's formula took one unit of time, then Nilankanta Somya G's series took about two units of time. And whereas Madhva Leibniz series took about 98,000 units of time. Clearly, infinite series offers us a fascinating insight into the relationship between pi and infinity. Although pi appears to be an unpredictable number, these infinite series demonstrate a distinctive structure that links pi to infinity.
And therefore, by studying these infinite series, one can gain more understanding about the behavior and properties of pi, thereby shedding light onto the most intriguing constant of mathematics. The connection of pi to periodicity comes from the way we define angles. In its simplest form, in two dimension, an angle is a measure of rotation between two lines. And the simplest way to define angle between two lines is to simply place a circle centered at the point of intersection of these two lines. We will soon realize that the ratio of the arc length subtending these two lines with the radius of the circle is a constant for a circle of any size. And therefore, an angle can be objectively defined as the ratio of the arc length subtended by the two lines with the radius of the circle. The unit of angle measured in such a manner is called as radiance. If the circle has a unit radius, then the arc length subtended by the two line segments directly gives us angle in radiance. Now that we understand how a circle is used to define angles, let us briefly talk about periodic motion. A periodic motion refers to a type of motion where an object or a system repeats its motion over a fixed period of time. For example, the motion of planet Earth around the Sun is a periodic motion where our planet Earth takes exactly one year to complete one full revolution around the Sun. Now, since the circumference of the circle is 2 pi times the radius of the circle, any complete revolution of an object about its axis of rotation can be quantified by 2 pi radians or 360 degrees. Any subsequent complete rotation of the object about its axis of rotation is then quantified by integer multiple of 2 pi. And this is where pi finds its place in periodic motion. Now consider a point object that has circular motion with radius r and angle theta. The horizontal component of this object is given by r cosine theta whereas the vertical component is given by r sine theta. If you carefully observe this object one rotation after another, you will soon realize that the value of sine and cosine repeats itself after one complete revolution of the object. That is, the periodicity of the sine and cosine function is 2 pi. In fact, pi is not only crucial for sine or cosine functions, but also for any other periodic function. This link is established through Fourier series that allows us to decompose any periodic function as sum of numerous sine and cosine terms that have different amplitude, frequency and phases. This tremendously important technique that finds its application in numerous engineering and science problems was developed by the French mathematician Joseph Fourier in the early 19th century. Mathematically, any function f of x that has a period of 2L that is, it repeats itself at an interval of 2L, can be written as sum of weighted cosine and sine terms as per Fourier series formula. In this formula, the constants a0, an, and bn are called as Fourier coefficients. Now, I don't want you to worry about these complex equations. All we want to see here is that in these equations that allows us to decompose any periodic function into numerous sine and cosine terms, we have presence of pi. Let me show you an example of how Fourier series can be used to break down a periodic function into multiple sine and cosine functions by considering a square wave that has a period of two. In this particular example, all the cosine terms vanish and we only have sine terms. This figure shows first 20 components of Fourier series sum. We now consider the first five terms of the series and we can see that with mere five terms we are starting to reproduce the original function. And with 20 terms the approximation gets even better and with 100 terms we have almost reproduced the original function. The importance of pi in Fourier series is not limited to its appearance in the formulas describing coefficient of Fourier series. Pi also shows up in Fourier transform which is the generalized form of Fourier series and it is used to analyze frequency content of non-periodic functions. And it is extremely important tool in the field of signal processing and image processing. Overall, Pi's connection to periodicity is a fundamental aspect of its role in mathematics and applications in wide range of fields. Whether it is in context of trigonometric functions, 
Fourier analysis, or definition of angles, or waves and oscillations, or even number theory, Pi's presence shows its deep connection to natural world. Pi finds itself in numerous modern applications, and one of the most obvious applications of Pi is in the area of engineering and architecture, especially where we have to calculate geometric properties of structures that are circular in nature. For instance, columns and arches. Pi is also crucial in understanding dynamic behavior of structures that are subjected to dynamic load, such as wind and earthquake, especially in California, where you have such high-rise structures and they are also subjected to earthquakes. One very important property of the structure is its resonating frequency. And if the resonating frequency of the structure matches the frequency of the dynamic load, then the vibrations can be amplified and that could lead to severe collapse of the structure. Since pi has direct relationship with periodicity, it is also important in the area of signal processing, communication systems and control systems such as used in this aircraft carrier and other advanced engineering machines, as well as in the area of image processing, audio and visual processing, seismology, and other engineering applications where frequency content of the signal is important for both periodic and non-periodic functions and where we use Fourier series and Fourier transformation in order to get this frequency content. It doesn't end here. Pi also makes an appearance in a very popular formula of Gaussian or normal distribution. In statistics, normal distribution is used to model wide variety of phenomena such as height of population, or distribution of IQ of population or noise or uncertainty in sensor measurements. Pi finds itself in this formula and therefore has direct influence on the shape and the area under the curve of normal distribution. Clearly, Pi is far from being mere mathematical constant. It is deeply intertwined with the mysteries of universe and therefore it appears in numerous formulas and equations that are used to model physical system. Pi is silently present in every aspect of our lives. And get this, because of how significant Pi is, today the March 14th is delegated to it. And if you ask me, it should be celebrated as a national holiday. But today certainly warrants some kind of celebration and I'm going to celebrate it with an apple pie. I wish you all a very happy Pi Day as well. Until we meet again, more power to you.